I'm going to start off with a quote from one of my good friends, Albert Einstein. <laughs> Everyone's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it's stupid. Growing up, I was definitely that fish. And to make matters worse, I was a dyslexic one. But this stubborn fish still had huge ambitions to climb, despite all odds. And if I told you pizza was the answer, would you believe me? But before I get into that, I'm going to take you down memory lane to where it started at school. At school, I struggled to do what everyone managed to do, concentrate. I did not want to copy from the board. I did not want to listen to what the teacher was saying. I didn't want to get talked at. I wanted to explore. I wanted to talk to my peers. I wanted to ignite conversations. I wanted to touch. I wanted to feel. I wanted to see it. But we all know that's not how it's done. And it showed in my grades. I was predicted an E for my GCSE maths and ungradable for my science. My teacher sat me down and she said, Jessica, Science is not for everybody. Maths is not for everybody. Some people are talented and some people are just not. So maybe you should try exploring other more creative subjects like art, drama. I wanted to be a scientist. Maybe it wasn't for me then. So I went home, still kind of motivated and not so motivated because my teacher knows best. And I started to search online different scientists or different people that I could possibly become. And when I was searching online, I realized that none of them looked like me. None of them were female and none of them were women of color. The directors, the people in charge did not look like me. And that was just another reinforcement, Jessica, maybe science is not for you. Closer to my exams, I started to become that kid that was not interested in science and maths in school. I sat at the back and I did not listen to what the teacher was saying. I was at home eating pizzas with my brother and my older brother was complaining to my mum that my younger brother James was eating all the pizza and half the pizza was already eaten. James continued eating while Joel was complaining to my mum, and he had eaten half of the half that was left. So James had eaten a quarter. James had eaten a quarter. James had eaten fractions. I was understanding fractions. Pizza. I realized that I could understand fractions, something that I didn't understand a few weeks ago, based on my brother eating it in front of me. I understood fractions. So why couldn't I get it in my test? Why didn't I not get an A? I started to use the environment at home, my, my garden, potatoes for surface area, the plants around me to understand science and maths. Videos, creative learning, all sorts, informally. And I ended up getting an A in my GCSE maths. I proved my teacher wrong. So there was something right about what I was doing at home. OK, so. This is where my STEM journey started. I enjoyed science and maths using informal methods at home, and I taught myself that. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and maths, is a part of our everyday lives. I'm going to break that down for you. Science. Science is chemistry when we're cooking. The stars in the sky. The sun that we sometimes use as an energy source. Technology. The phones we use. Our laptops. Microscopes, telescopes, engineering, the roads we cross, the, the bridges we cross safely, the cars we heavily rely on. Then there's money, maths. We, we use money daily. We use time daily. Technology is something we heavily rely on. Yet, in some cases, it's viewed as a class to finish by the time we're 16. It's only for a certain class of people, for an elite type of people. Something isn't adding up. And I knew something wasn't adding up because I got an A for my GCSE maths. <laughs> OK, so I got to university. I'm studying my science degree. And something was still frustrating me. <coughs> because I felt like I had discovered something and no one else was sharing this. No one else was sharing this love for STEM I had. So I wanted to go in the community and share it. So I had this passion. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a shop. 
I'm going to get a group of volunteers and we're going to we're going to change the community we're going to change everyone's perceptions and I was really excited but there was barriers again Jessica you're too young Jessica you're inexperienced Jessica you haven't got the best grades in the class who are you to teach the community what if you teach them something wrong okay maybe I'm not good enough maybe I shouldn't be teaching people in the community maybe it's too much of a risk to give me the money so I did something that I'm not so proud of. I participated in the clinical trial to raise the funds for my first event. It wasn't wrong that I did the clinical trial. It was wrong that I had to go to the extent of doing a clinical trial on myself to raise the funds for my community. I raised the funds and people turned up. Hundreds of people turned up. People were moved. They felt confident about studying science and maths, even though they were told they were not good enough. And it changed people. They felt they could be doctors. They felt they could be scientists and engineers. And there was girls and boys. They were from different ethnicities. And from then, we started to get support. We got more support from people in the community. And it made me realize that, yes, I was a catalyst of change here in Leicester. But imagine if this was happening in communities all over the world, all over the UK. Imagine if there was someone like me in the community telling girls that it's okay for you to be an engineer, it's okay for you to study physics. You're just as smart as a boy. What if there was someone telling girls like me, Jessica, you can study maths, you can study science, even though you study it differently, even though you're dyslexic, even though you have disabilities, it's okay. We as a community can do something. We as a community can inspire the young to become scientists, tech, go into technology, become engineers, and study all of those subjects. It's just a case of researching, igniting their flame, making them feel excited about it, having conversations with them, doing a little kitchen salt experiment that you can learn on YouTube with them which takes a few seconds. But we can all have an impact on a young person. And it, doesn't not, it does not need to be a career. It does not need to be a class that they need to complete and get an A. It could just be an interest, an interest in our everyday world. So we should make STEM accessible for everyone. Join me. Thank you.